106.1 Next Radio, this is The Big Talk. My name is Kanarim Gume. Tonight, let's look into the Mpuka 500 million shillings issue. Uh, this has been all over the news after it was revealed uh, that Mpuka, while leader of opposition, was given in a meeting which he was in attendance, uh, by the way, a uh, 500 million shillings service award. We are questioning whether this is a legal or moral question that we should be asking. But was it handled appropriately? Many have accused uh, the NUP president, Robert Chagulanyi, Bobby Wine, uh, for having failed uh, to manage this issue internally. But Robert Chagulanyi, in an interview on TV Today, said that actually this was the right thing to do. And uh, he has been asked to do three things. That is Matthias Impoga, to step down as a parliamentary commissioner, to return the 500 million shillings, but also go on and apologize to Ugandans for um, the, 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 the act of having awarding, awarded himself 500 million shillings. So was this Mpuga issue handled appropriately? And what are sort of uh, the consequences that are going to um, uh, be on uh, the, the politics of the land? Joining me on the show is uh, the Uganda Law Society uh, President Emeritus, Simon Peter Chinobe. Good to have you on the show. I'm glad to be here. Uh, and. Uh, thank our listeners for listening to us you, you want to pull that microphone closer to you Very well. you've seen what's uh, happening online uh, with this uganda parliament exhibition and uh, it was through this exhibition that the Sempoga issue come, came to light mm. do you think what was done was right having received 500 million shillings service award now i i think from the communication i have seen so far mm. officially and formally Mpoga has not received the 500 million. That is the first thing. But the Parliamentary Commission uh, set aside uh, 500 million, made a recommendation that the, le the leader of opposition, former, who would be Matthias, should be rewarded with uh, 500 million, some form of gratuity. Um, uh, I don't know where the noise is coming from, but I'll look at the legal aspects. When you look at the Administration uh, of Parliament Act, and more specifically Section 6 going uh, on to about 8, um, the Parliamentary Commission is given a mandate to do budgeting, allocation, among others. But it does not act in finality. Uh, upon an allocation that uh, th that budget is sent to the head of state, the executive, uh, for approval, uh, and uh, he can make his comments in objection. He may not alter the budget, but that's the procedure. Now, legally, uh, whatever was done was correct and in line with the law. And so the issue of uh, this is corruption, this is a bribe, is wrong. It's a misnomer, uh, either arising out of ignorance or just cheap pop, uh, politicking. But uh, corruption, if you go to the definition of corruption, this allocation done legally as mandated by law mm. cannot be considered corruption. So, and, and that's why uh, the, the, this question that um, we're asking uh, this evening, was the issue then handled appropriately? Having to no, no. write a letter, put it out to the public. and no, You know, uh, uh, I don't want to say there is an absence of uh, maturity, but uh, when you talk about leadership, one of the things the opposition has been rooting for is the rule of law rule of law requires due process so uh, i don't know if uh, the president of a party has the power and mandate to make such a resolution without a fair hearing without following due process and is that the kind of politics we want for our country so while uh, while it's sad what is happening to puga while it works in favor of my party due process has to be followed there are things we call the the, the rules of natural justice a fair hearing but also parties should have an internal mechanism of solving disputes 
And uh, the unfortunate bit is what we have seen from uh, uh, the, the opposition is uh, what the head of the party says passes. There is no regard for due process. There is no regard for the rights of others, save for those in the line of leadership, which, in my opinion, is very, very unfortunate. Because now, so we go to the law. He's done what he should have done by the law. You're saying morally it is wrong. What is the compass of moral? What is the parameter of moral? Because I can give all scenarios of moral. Receiving 3.6 billion as a party claiming to, <laughs> to be fighting uh, poverty <laughs> may be more easy, more to me. Hmm. In fact, I would like all parties to reject that man and send it back and say for us, because Ugandans are poor, we cannot take from the consolidated fund. Did it go to service for, delivery? Uh, uh, exactly. It hmm. hasn't gone for, uh, to service delivery. Hmm. Oh, say we've received three billion, we have built a hospital. Somebody receiving a duty-free car without paying tax, it's not moral in my opinion mm. so uh, I, even mps at that level receiving the kind of money they receive is it moral so what is the parameter of moral and i think um if due process had been followed so then noop or fdc or whatever party should come up and say if you receive money as allowances for sitting in committees it is immoral don't take it if you receive uh, allowances for going on duty, it is not moral. Don't take it. If you receive uh, allowances for traveling, it is not moral. Don't take it. There should be a parameter of determining what is moral and what is immoral, especially if you want it as a binding rule in the party. But for as long as there is no rule prohibiting certain payments, me members of parliament, I mean, everybody, when you work anywhere, I have employees I employ. When they are leaving, they're entitled to their gratuity. They are entitled to their terminal benefits. And if they've been out, uh, outstanding, I even reward them with a 13th check. And these are common terms amongst the corporate world. In every parliament in the world, you have gratuity, you have allowance, you have your salary, uh, both accommodation, uh, foreign travel, domestic travel. It's, it's known. That means uh, that whichever yes. leader of opposition sits in that chair can sit and determine, uh, together with other commissioners, how much money should be given to them as so, a service award. F f first, mm. cannot sit and determine. It's the commission that determines. And the commission is not comprised of one person. So there are many other commissioners that sit in that commission and make that determination. And I, I think what should have been raised as an issue should have been, does this apply to both the former, uh, current, and uh, yet to be leaders of opposition? That, mm. that is what we should be discussing. Okay, if parliamentary, the, the uh, parla administration of parliament act uh, is ambiguous in what you do in the event of conflict of interest, can we have that rectified? Those are the discussions we should be having around uh, the 500 million and not whether it was a bribe or not a bribe, whether he should take it or not take it. I mean, there is nothing preventing him from taking it. Mm. There is nothing that makes it illegal. All due process was followed. And if people were able to read through the letter of the law, they should find that Matthias did nothing wrong. And this, uh, th th this has nothing to do with political lines or otherwise. Uh, I, I think the politics of the day dictate that he should be made look bad which I think is very unfortunate and a very sad day in the politics of this country, especially for the opposition. Whatever is happening in NUP, because Robert Chaglany says he sat with uh, senior legislators um, and, and that resolution was out of that meeting. You, you think that there was uh, perhaps uh, an independent organ that should have been constituted? So there should always, when you're talking about disciplinary matters... Mm. When you're talking about issues that potentially soil the image and name of somebody, there has to be a disciplinary organ of the party to determine that. And uh, I mean the processes, NOOP has lawyers. The processes or the due process is known. It's clearly outlined. Call a person, let him give his defense, side of the story, 
evaluate the evidence and the information. Really, I, I, I mean, how do you come and say, I saw something on the internet? You imagine how many people would be fired or even hanged if we were to go by what happens on the internet. Mm. Really, I saw something on the internet. In fact, it didn't even say the resolution was reached among us members of parliament. I saw something on the internet when I came back and I was alarmed. I called him. He said he had done it. And I told him resign. And I issued the statement. That is not due process. You do not go by what is on the net. Because the net has malicious people, it has truthful people, it has uh, attention seekers, it has lumpens and vagabonds, all are there commenting on an issue. I mean, you wake up in the morning and somebody is just commenting on an issue they have totally no idea about. And that's why they say you're busy uh, talking on social media. Who are you talking with? Are you talking with intelligent people? And that is a backdrop to show you that not everybody and not every post that is made online is justifiable, valid, and defensible in law. So what do you think then happened? Uh, I think they had uh, they, they wanted to use this opportunity to get rid of uh, Matthias Impoga because apparently um, they say that uh, he's a potential leader uh, of the party, th that Robert Chagulani perhaps thought maybe if I use this opportunity, then I'll have uh, sort of capped his uh, ambitions, if these ambitions exist anyway. Now, well, I don't know what is happening in the internal politics mm. of uh, NUP, and I will not labor explaining much, but uh, if I were in Matthias's shoes, I would definitely feel like I'm being dealt an unfair hand that everything is being done to discredit me everything is being done to kick me out of the party and uh, le let me tell you it doesn't matter uh, you know uh, wh when you're in the opposition you haven't yet taken power everybody supposedly a friend to you should be kept close and your enemy is even closer the narrative of thinking that you cannot be outshined all power should be centered around you i think is an exceptionally misleading uh, norm and uh, we we have seen this it's not just happened in uganda we can give uh, all historic uh, lines of the old sovereign and it's not ended well politics is about accommodativeness but also politics is about guarding jealously the names of those that stand by you now, what is going to happen? And I don't know whether people have sat back to think about this, especially those in Noop, because uh, Matthias Impuga has a following, and uh, not just in, uh, in Kampala and these other districts in Buganda, but in Masaka. Uh, do you think the outreach of Noop is going to be the same in Masaka? And, and I mean, as a leader, those are things you the, need to think about. The consequences. The consequences. I like, you know, uh, I, I keep giving people an example of a person who does not make the most out, uh, outrageous uh, decisions. And that is uh, uh, the president of the Republic of Uganda, His Excellency President Museveni. If you've noticed, uh, there are so many rumors that surround his desk. Mm. And... Uh, what baffles many is his level of patience because some of us would jump at the opportunity to fire in prison some even kill among others if we had that uh, arena of rumors around us but he sits back listens holds himself back investigates does research and by the time he takes action it is fun because it is backed by the facts and evidence. And that is a trait of a true leader. We cannot be talking about replacing a leader when we are worse at leadership. Interesting. What are the consequences on the politics of the land? Big Talk returns shortly. Big Talk, hosted by Kanare Mugu. Tonight I'm joined by uh, the uh, president of Uganda Law Society Emeritus. That is uh, Simon Peter Chinobe. Um, Council, I, I want to understand the, the consequences because you have 57 members of parliament that represent the national unity platform in, uh, on, 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 on the NUP ticket in parliament. 
55 out of 57 come from Buganda. And um, Mathias Mpuga is the season leader in Buganda. Mm. And, and you earlier hinted on it. Uh, do you think that uh, perhaps there's a way to turn around this and, and not affect the party? Or, or this is a gone case? Well, um, y- you see, in the midst of political pride and arrogance, mm. it uh, becomes impossible to solve even the simplest things. And yet, in my opinion, the simplest thing that should have been done is, first of all, the leaders in the party should prevail upon their president. That is number one. And number two, there should be a commission of some sort. What, ex- what exactly happened? And if that statement, which I believe was issued in error, intentionally intended to tarnish somebody's image, there should be an apology made. Uh, that's the way you build cohesion in a party. But because, again, of political arrogance, the king, the, the, the king uh, syndrome that uh, Ugandan politics suffers from, uh, you're going to have a very big drift in, uh, in, in, in the party. Because, first of all, the powers that would have prevailed uh, on uh, these two giants... Uh, would have been, uh, for instance, the Kabaka or the kingship. That one is not possible because one party has made it a point to degenerate, disregard, and uh, insult the institution. Uh, Religious leaders can't involve because they've been insulted to the marrow. Uh, uh, And so I see a big disintegration. The landscape is going to drastically change. So the issue is from what to what because uh, while uh, you have Buganda as an entity I know Masaka as a given will drop off so that 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 would mean if Matthias does not stay with NUP which is very likely if uh, this hooliganism does not cease uh, then there is a likelihood that he will take uh, a certain portion of uh, Buganda with him and uh, we, we, which I think is sad because in every democratic dispensation you need a strong opposition not a fragmented one it's the strong opposition that gives legitimacy but also sets a parameter for alternative leadership in this case uh, from what we are seeing uh, the opposition has not lived to the scale because you have all now political parties uh, I- I- fighting, uh, they have drawn camps in FDC, it's the same Democratic Party, same UPC, the same um, maybe the Alliance for National Transformation, I haven't had. Uh, but now even the strongest political party, uh, do you think that uh, perhaps other leaders from different political parties can come in and, and save the day? Be- uh, because I know that nas- National Union Platform, um, like it did in 2021, uh, mm-hmm. instead of primaries, actually went to selection of flag bearers. Mm-hmm. And if this continues the way it is, they can choose to give uh, uh, the flag to someone else uh, from Matthias Impuga's uh, constituency. Mm-hmm. And if that's, that means he cannot come on an NUP ticket. Uh, the, the, this is uh, the beauty of, uh, about med leadership. Mm when you are made as a leader it does not matter whether you wield a ticket or not people will vote for you nonetheless and that's why you see that these are some of the things we've been talking with our people in nram that you see when you don't organize uh, nice formidable primaries then you have disenfranchised people it should not shock you that the independents are the ones winning elections why didn't the flag bearers win if they were that popular so, in my opinion, the issue of political lineage, political affiliation card is losing significance, especially in light of uh, awareness, political awareness. But also, let's go back to other political leaders trying to rein in on uh, the leadership of NUP. Um, you know... The unfortunate thing is what is happening in NUP is not new. It has happened in other parties. There is one recently that uh, has, uh, I think we have FDC1 and FDC2. Um, And uh, what is the rift? 
somebody waking up in the morning and saying you took money from an unknown source. Of course, by the time they say that, they are alleging you took money from the head of state. Oh, we saw so and so drinking tea with so and so. My, my politics, politics is a game of numbers. Politics is a game of numbers. So you want to reach out to the other side as much as possible to see to it that you pull as much clout as you can from there. You know, sitting, me sitting with a, a new person will not make me an enemy to NRM. Have you noticed that? Yeah. Because we want to pull as many as we can. Mm. But a new person seated next to me will automatically mean Aride. He's taken money. Where do you think uh, people get money to buy everyone? <laughs> Why do you think everybody is, is, for is for sale? Yeah. Incidentally, the irony is because Uganda is a small country and everybody is related, intermarried, DTC. Mm. I have seen the some people in the leadership of NOOP at events of uh, NRM people. And my joke is normally to Kwemeka. It shouldn't be like that. Rayla Odinga recently was here with, uh, with uh, Ruto the president of Kenya. These are nemesis. They are sworn enemies. But when it comes to national interests, when it comes to other issues, they unite. Uh, why, why it goes to politics. Mm. Ah. Why have our politics failed to mature to that point? Uh, I, I, I think um, the opposition is built around the ability to insult the president. The opposition is built around the ability to insult those that do not agree with it. The opposition is built around, uh, and, and I think the acronym they use for that is defiance. Mm. So wh wh whatever happens, no matter how good it is, we shall stand up to say it is bad. Uh, we shall look for the angle that makes it look bad. And uh, with the seed of politics of hatred, it is impossible to have a convergence of minds. This is a problem. You and me, the local peasants who elect these politicians, are not looking for the best English or Uganda speakers. We are looking for a person who can make good roads, for a person who will ensure we have medicine in hospitals, for a person who will ensure that good laws are passed, for a person who ensures that I will not be oppressed by taxes, for a person who ensures that uh, there will be a livelihood or assemblance thereof for the future generation. That is what the common man is looking for. Uh, not how best you can abuse Museveni, because if that was the parameter, I can assure you Museveni would be losing uh, elections on the basis of insults. Mm. But uh, he's always victorious. Interesting. Let me get some comments here. Uh, people who are listening or watching the show, uh, Dr. Anyama Alfred says, so you guys want to continue massaging corruption. I think you responded to that and said, uh, the real definition of corruption this does not look like it, uh, it no it does not just look like it mm. it is not true ibrahim Mochungu says it was handled appropriately the issue of matthias impuga because impuga was called in the meeting accepted the allegations and requested to resign but being big-headed and knowing him to be educated caused the whole saga misfortune natkunda laila says some people don't know the exact magnitude of corruption that's why you see them claiming mbu muandibi sirikiri de ne internally. Well, the risk is such corrupt people, Tomanya, what they negotiate with the dictator to earn such sums. Uh, Bahati Kevin says, let Mpuga go and make his own party. So, Council, you have uh, a disgruntled group inside the FDC, yeah. which we've now termed the FDC Katonga, because how else do we call them? Every mm. side is saying they are the legitimate FDC. You now have a disgruntled mm -hmm. group in the national unity platform mm. especially the member of parliament who came from dp mm. Subi and joined the national unity platform mm. and i've seen them actually defending mpuga on this matter mm. seen comments from medad segona and the rest mm. uh, what how do you think 2026 is going to likely play out that, now before i go to 2026 mm. playing out mm. you have seen the comments you have read mm. a narrative has been sent that mathias was involved in corruption and that is the hazard of social media because not everybody on social media has the intellectual ability to internalize, conceptualize, do research, and read the information available. Jumping, whoa, 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 whoa. you know, now a man is being painted corrupt, cor corrupt 
for an act done within the law that does not even constitute corruption just because of an error of a leader. So we are not saying keep quiet on issues of corruption. No, we are saying even a murderer deserves due process. That even uh, a thief deserves due process, more so a leader. 2026. 2026, I think, is going to be interesting. You have the constant uh, opposition. The people who are supporting Bessija, the same people supporting now, nope. They just keep oscillating depending on where the wave takes them. The question is how many people will be there to offer themselves for leadership. And I think that's going to be the challenge. So um, do you have now four parties, FDC1, FDC2, NUP1, NUP2, uh, all NUP1 fighting within, and then uh, you go for elections fighting? How is it going to turn out? And I think the winner in all this is going to be NRM. Why? Because you of guys must all, be smiling to the bank. Uh, uh, I, I mm. think they are. <laughs> <laughs> yes, people, I, I mean, NRM must be happy. Mm. It's the only part of where not hearing uh, noise. Either because it, has, it still has strong leadership mm. or because of the streamlined processes of due process. But this is also wha wha what happens. Uh, some of us are not celebrating because we need a strong opposition to justify a victory for the NRM. Yeah, that's part of democracy. We, we, we don't want it easy. But I can assure you the performance of the opposition this time round is going to be dismal. It may be the same. They may be able to garner 30% like they usually do. But I don't see any single candidate getting the 30% as Besije and Chagulani have done before mm. because of the fragmentation. Uh, uh, you know, someone just threw a scenario here and said, uh, what if PLU uh, of General Mosgeni Rugaba does register as a political party, mm. they might actually turn out as the leaders of opposition if they garner more seats uh, uh, second to NRM. And, 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 and let me tell you, that is a very, very strong possibility. Mm. Uh, the, 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 the possibility that they may become the leaders of the opposition mm. in government. It's possible. Yeah. Because um, uh, he's done mobilization, etc., etc., even when it's not political, he's gone around the country. And guess what? I've seen him organizing to go to Masaka. Aha, uh -huh. yes. I'm told time. he'll be in Masaka soon. Mm. So uh, the only issue I think the imponderable here is, one, um, he's a serving army officer. For as long as he's still a serving army officer, we can't talk politics. Mm. So he would need to resign. But also number two, part of his following is NRM leaning. Mm. In other words, uh, if you break that apart, uh, you may even create a bigger disaster than uh, the opposition getting 30%. Because then you may steal from the 51, 61, 91 that uh, the ruling NRM may get. Mm. So um, he might not necessarily run as president, uh, but this party getting even new leaders out there, and they um, they turn out to have the majority next, or rather second to NRM. I, I think if I were MK, mm. one of the things I would do for now is pull out from the driving seat of P PLU. Was it PLU? Yes, PLU. Um, I would. I would pull out from the driver's seat because of the fact that you're a serving military officer. Mm. But I would make sure that PLU has candidates, especially in the opposition strongholds. That would be my strategy. And I can assure you that strategy would work because uh, people are looking for where to fall. And uh, you have to, uh, you know, four camps one uh, elitist educated may could make good leaders but now riddled by conflict and scandal then uh, another portion is a portion of hooligans mainly hopeheads uh too much noise uh, mastered the art of uh, insults and intimidation i don't know whether an insult and intimidation gets you elected mm. we know soldiers who used to flog 
voters to vote for them and they lost in big numbers in elections. I had one in my village I will not talk about because he's now a very good friend of mine. So why, uh, why do you call them hooligans? You know, let, let, let me give the simplistic example. Hmm. Canary, you're not from Buganda. No, I'm not. You cannot rise up to raise a finger against the king. Hmm. No matter the justification. Full stop. The yes. day I see you doing that, hmm. I will know that either you've gone mad or you are a hophead. You know hopeheads? Uh, there is something terribly wrong. Mm. That is one sign of hooliganism. But also look at the conduct on uh, online, in public. How do they hold themselves out? It's one thing being aggressive. That's a good thing. It's one thing being passionate about your ideas. That's a very good thing. But for you to insult anybody that disagrees with you is narcissistic in nature because the very nature of humor even god has said i have given you the will to think as you but if you do x y and z we feel it's a sin not we, it is a sin if god has given you the will who is nup so politics is a contest of ideas not insults not it's a contest and i think perhaps there is a deficiency in brain power so if you cannot add your point then the most likelihood is that you will descend into insults and personal attacks mm. oh so and so is an idiot so and so is looking for a job okay i'm looking for a job you also go and look for one <laughs> it is not a crime to look for a job so do you think you are going to blackmail a person by saying uh, they are looking for a job they have been bribed they are what did they useful idiots <laughs> there are so many terms used so what you also go and be a useful idiot in your party mm. but do you think you are drawing more votes to yourself by insulting those that did not vote for you. I think not. Council, do you see the Honorable Matthew Simpuga um, forming his own party or joining a pressure group that is going to be, of course, not certainly um, an, um, in support of NUP ideas? Because he actually, when being interviewed, he said he, was, he did not join the party. He was part of the formation of the party. Mm. You, you, you see, he was part of the formation of the party, mm. but he's not in control of the party. So now when the party alienates you, what do you do? You cannot go and start, an, like this, uh, these FDC people did, they went and started another FDC in Katonga. Mm. But eventually, if rule comes to shove, Katonga will collapse and FDC in Ajanakumbi will take, because they're in control. Mm. They're in control. So uh, I, I think the ultimate... Uh, end will be either Matthias hardlining and being frustrated within the party he helped form uh, or he will walk away and say you know I can't or he look even for another alliance mm. you know there is another alliance forming somewhere uh, I think this wind blowing FDC blowing noop is going to end up into something and that's why you see it's very important for the existing parties to point out that the others are corrupt to try and kill that wave. But the question is, can it be killed, especially when you have two strong men behind you? Mm. In my opinion, I think it may be impossible. Isn't it, uh, wouldn't it be a good thing if the Alliance for National Transformation shows proper leadership now? Because it would be, it's already a registered political party. It has leaders that are respectable. Would it be the right thing to do to show leadership now so that it can be able to attract uh, the members of other political parties that are disintegrated? Uh, I think uh, Aunt, uh, Aunt has very reasonable leaders, mm. in my opinion. Uh, reasonable and tested, some of them likable, like the former leader of the opposition, Winnie. I think she's a very, very objective person, very, very ambi ambient character. Um, what I do not see and what I think we need to see more is the charisma of leadership. Uh, but uh, everybody is talking about FDC, uh, NOOP, and nobody is talking about ANT.
the question is why so i uh, i think uh, uh Be- because it maybe it would look funny uh moon to mm. exiting fdc to go and form and and now best jedi is granted with uh, the leadership of fdc to go back and now and join the person who left him so, so <laughs> uh, it wouldn't look funny mm. people please listen to me if you are in politics mm. okay if you are being led by politician uh think about what the politicians can do for you <laughs> i will not talk about the politicians and their ways but if you're in politics you should know by now that there are no permanent friends in politics and i'll explain um in kenya let me use kenya which is nearby you had uh, ray lodinga you had uh, kinyata the late ray lodinga senior uh, no, he wasn't Ray Odinga. He was Odinga, Odinga, Odinga mm. uh, senior. Those were sworn enemies. And when one died, they could not agree on whether Odinga should be president. So they brought a person they thought was meek, uh, quiet, incompetent. It is to get all those bad words and put them there. And so elected a man uh, called Moi who eventually became the professor of politics in Kenya. Mm. Now, when Moi is going, he says, no, your father did me, was a very good friend of mine, and rooted for Uhuru, Kenyatta. Uhuru lost elections to a coalition that had been set up, I think it was called Orange or something like that. That coalition had been set up by Rayla Odinga, Kibaki, and uh, the Saitotis, among others, to outwit the strong man of Kanu, Moi, and his candidate, Uhuru. Mm. And so they ran, and Kibaki won. In the second uh, run, it was uh, again uh, 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 Kinyata, Ruto, um, and a few other people. Ray Lodinga stayed this way with Saitoti, Kalonzo, etc. etc. They won. Well, Kenyatta won. There was a handshake that brought Odinga on the table as prime minister uh, to make the country governable. Opposition, but came to serve in government. Then now, the tables turned. Ruto, who had been in government and friends with uh, Uhuru. Uh, Uhuru, fell out so badly that Uhuru decided to back, f- to back his arch enemy, mm. Raila Odinga. Raila Odinga lost. Ruto won. Recently, you saw them in Kampala meeting the man with a hat. Mm. And uh, I'm told Raila Odinga wants to be the chairperson of AU. Again, there are no permanent enemies in politics. And so, what does that tell you? That we can disagree and fall in different categories, in different parties, different orientations, different ideology. But it's still possible for me to convince you to buy into my ideology and vice versa. And uh, in the event of problems like this, we can still sit together and say, you know, this is our common objective. We can build ideology around this. Why don't we make a unit front and do X, Y, and Z? And I think uh the opposition is lacking a person that is able to do that and i think aunt would be a very good person because uh i want to suspect that uh gregory mgisha muntu retired major general is not as uh, greedy for power as uh, many people ah so he would be the person that would come out as Ray Lodinga did in Kenya. Ray Lodinga for a long time was referred to as the kingmaker. Why? Because he would come and say, no, guys, let's step aside and let so-and-so take lead. You know, instead of saying, no, I want to take lead, the, the kingman's uh, syndrome in Kampala. No, he became the kingmaker. We can have a kingmaker here. Say, guys, why don't we fall behind so and so and so and so and so? Mm. And uh, once we have sorted uh, ourselves out, we can all go and do our own gig. So I, I think that lacks and again compounded with the selfishness of the politics in this country. Because I also think that uh, actually the Alliance for National Transformation has an opportunity to lead the opposition now. 
mm. has an opportunity to produce the next leader of opposition. Mm. Should the disgruntled members in NUP, NDP, mm. and FDC um, rally behind the party? But 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 I don't know why it's silent. Again, you talked about charisma leadership. Mm. Uh, if we believe actually for example in the person of general mujisha muntu is a respectable leader with integrity how come then that um people do not actually rally behind him the, the, there's also a number of uh, members of parliament uh, the paul Mwiris, the jared karohangas who stood the ali salasos they stood and lost elections and that's how ant failed to get a member of parliament um in the 11th parliament so 2026 is going to be qu quite interesting. I also okay. know some disgruntled members uh, from the NRM mm. and they can also eat into the independence. Mm. 2026 is going to be very interesting. Council, um, what what do you see happening uh, with um, the DP block inside the National Unity Platform? Do you think they're going back? If Mpuga exits, will they exit with him? So, um, I, I think any politician now is studying the situation mm. the inherent nature of politicians is selfishness so uh i i, I have seen some already disassociate, disassociating themselves from the decision chagulani made what does that show you that should the party persist with this decision and the person we believe is unfairly treated walks away will go with them but there are also others who are still staking i will not mention names but there are quite a number who are still looking at the situation wondering where do we fall we can't go back home which is dp because of its uh, issues we can't stay here because of its hostility so where do we go and i, and I, and I think that's the problem mm. but i can assure you when matthias walks um you're going to see a big drift in nup um for the very very nature for the very very simple reason one he's been a reasonable outperforming uh member of noop and he's been the vice president i think he is the vice Still president mm. of central and uh, i have seen many leaders of opposition but i have not seen quite one that commanded the respect uh Matthias did mm. especially from his members of uh, opposition even when they did not understand what was going on they would say ah um, kura, you get there mm. especially <laughs> around the boycott of the missing exactly team. and they would move with him mm. i remember when they were chased out of committees they went back to him and say what do we do do we keep away from the committees or you? He had to tell them no go for the committees mm. So he's, uh, he's built an aroma of respect uh, and command among us, especially members of parliament. And these members of parliament read. They are not, uh, they are not most of them are not idiots. Mm. They read. Now, if they read, if they know what happened, if they know what happens in parliament, I think the issue is going to be who will enable me go through sail through mm. with ease at the ballot is it chagulani with noop or matthias with whatever out, uh, outfit and it's also a possibility by the way that matthias will decide to stay in noop and be the nightmare that noop has been dreading but but, but it's how also then, a possibility uh the the, the noop leadership um i'm just thinking during the scenario might uh, deny him a, a, a ticket so he runs probably as an independent he uh, can run as an independent but but you see also but he can also wait for the election of party president uh, exactly mm. and he has the mobilization capacity from among the the the, the, the leaders uh, let me tell you uh, unfairness is seen when a person says so and so is our president he doesn't listen to us you know there is a problem mm uh so and so is our president but his brother is the one running the party him and the family are running funds Th these things do not come from why is smoke always following you if you are <laughs> th th that upright yeah. as you claim to be so these things do not come from the blue and people are watching we, we you can't claim to be getting rid of somebody 
and uh, stand out to be worse than that person. Narcissistic tendencies should be fought at all times, and especially when you're a leader, you have to be very, very careful not to exalt your narcissistic mm. element. That, that, that element of dictatorship. It is me. I, everything revolves around me. Everything happens around me. But it's interesting we that... We should be very careful. It's interesting that uh, your party president is accused of the same, but the party has remained intact. I, 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 I think mistakenly so. Mm. I have had interactions with the president. And uh, at all times, he will listen to your view. And if he's not sure about what the position should be, he will tell you, okay, okay, let me think about it. And I can assure you after a week or two, he will get back to you and say, but you said this, well, how about this? And he will discuss it with you. Mm. That is his mode of leadership. There are a few things where he will make decisions, but even those decisions, the president is very, very careful. He makes informed decisions. And that's why he's able to say no we say this because when this happened this and this happened we did research and i decided to order that this should be this and this and this so he, he's not a, a soul runner he's not a, a soul cowboy in the wild which seems to be the problem with then many of those mm -hmm. that want to replace him um, Kwicher is a Nova Gideon online says, is it legally acceptable for one to be part of a meeting that awards them? Now, one, you're asking, is it legally acceptable? Is it forbidden by the act I cited? It is not forbidden. It is not. That is number one. But also number two, were you there to affirm that he was there? Have you seen the minutes? Oh, not. Again, social media. Mm. You know? Was yeah, you're, he in that you're saying what should have been established first are facts. What exactly could have taken place? Exactly. Um, the Karamojongo Fisher says, Truth be told, if Bobby kept quiet and did nothing about Mpuga's saga, the regime apologists would be crucifying NUP by now. But what he did portrayed the kind of leader Uganda wants. I think, and Abimara Charles says, I think the speaker is required to speak honorably. Calling a group of people hooligans is unfortunate of a gentleman of him. Can you use the acceptable language to differentiate um, the two? And uh, Chiza Abel says Mpuga was not corrupt. He was just awarded and it's in the law. And putting that aside, I remember Chagrani was also permitted to drive a car without paying tax. So what should we call that? Interesting comments still coming in uh, here. Before you go on with comments, mm. the person who said I wrongly used the term hooligan. Mm. By the way, it's not abusive. It is a state of being. And uh, hooligan is a violent young troublemaker, typically one of a gang or a drunken, in some cases, uh, drugs, uh, hooligan. So it's not abusive. It, it's descriptive it's description of, of, of some behavior. of the behaviors mm. of some of our people. I name Kama Godan says there is need for any people to be taken back to school and be taught again the definition of corruption because I think they don't understand its meaning and its magnitude. When... Robert Chagulani released that later uh, document and uh, tweeted it. The document was not uh, signed by anyone. Mm. Matthias Impuga goes back to media and says, actually, um, says whatever was in that letter is not the exact representation of what happened in that meeting. First of all, calls the meeting uh, unofficial. It was an unofficial meeting mm -hmm. and, and uh, refuses to so many things that were in that letter. What does that show? D I think did, did Robert Chagulanyi lie? Uh, no, I, I, even after I saying that he, the meeting had the senior legislators, the leaders in the party. I, I think there is uh, a level of dishonesty. Mm. I don't know from where, whether from Mafia or from uh, NUP, mm. but there is a level of dishonesty. But again, the problems of the failure to follow due process. How does a letter get issued? In fact, in, 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 in some, the only difference is uh, in NRM, the president is uh, the fountain of honor. He's the head of state. But uh, you, you, you've seen communication coming in regard to the party. He's very, very careful about letting the secretary general uh, send out communication. But, but due process, how did 
people arrive to that letter, how did it end up on the internet? How did it get leaked? Clearly, there was a syndicate intended to make Matthias look bad. And I, incidentally, I feel sorry for him. He chose the bed to lie in. <laughs> hey, the chicken have come to roost. That's the portion he has to pay. But it's still unfortunate for a person that seeks uh, the rule of law. Due process ought to have been followed before his name being soiled. Interesting, Council. Uh, many thanks for speaking to us this evening. Uh, what, what, what's your parting shot? What do you think in this case, Honorable Matthias Mbuga should do? I, I think uh, Honorable Matthias Mbuga has done a good job in trying to educate people about what happened. The problem is uh, not as many uh, people have the ability to read and listen. Uh, we have a uh, feeling that everybody now is an expert on everything and nothing. But uh, I think Ma Mafia should uh, stand his ground. And I want to see leaders in the opposition. I have seen some come out to condemn uh, that dossier. But I need we need to see more people in NUP. We have lawyers in NUP. I mean, you have lawyers in NUP who are claimed to be highly educated. This should be advising the president that this is wrong. Due process. And, okay, let's assume it's a moral question. What is the basis and standard of morality mm. in NUP? Who what money should... More. Exactly. Mm. So, you should have a policy around that. For as long as you do not have a policy around that, that means anybody that annoys the party president mm. or any of the party leadership <laughs> stands the immoral. risk of being accused mm. of being corrupt. For taking a benefit. You, I went to Karangara. We were sensitizing people on behalf of parliament. Has paid this. Oh, you are corrupt because you picked from the consolidated fund. My God. So there has to be a parameter. And I think this is an opportunity for the leadership of NUP to rise beyond personal sentiments and political arrogance. To be able to settle the dust in the political sphere. Council Simon Peter Chinabe, very many thanks for sparing time to speak to us and honoring our invitation. Big Talk returns tomorrow 7 to 8 and uh, for now you can catch me on NBS television as I bring you the latest stories from the day. Good evening.